this tutorial is going to work through the histology of the different tissues in the human body, including epithelial tissue and the various connective tissues. The first slide we're going to examine is a cross section of the kidney. Please note that we are looking at the parietal layer of Bowman's capsule. The arrow is now in the capsular space and the ball that you see inside is the glomerulus. Notice that that parietal layer is a simple squamous layer of epithelium. We can also use the alveoli of the lung to see this type of epithelial. Again, we're looking at simple squamous epithelium. Now we're going to remain in our kidney for our next section, and this is going to move and shift to the tubules of the kidney that's going to allow for concentrating of urine. And we're going to see tubes. Now I usually tell my students to look for trigger words that are going to help them visualize where we are and what we're looking at. Again, tubes, 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 help us understand that we're in the kidney. And now we are on a tube. The white space is the lumen. The pointer is moving to the apical surface. Remember, epithelium is lining tubes, forming tubes. We have a nice, simple cuboidal arrangement here with a nice, robust nucleus in the center. And we see some adjacent tubules below and to the sides. Before we continue on to our next slide, I just want to remind everyone that we use a two-word nomenclature system to help us identify epithelium. The first is going to help us identify the arrangement of cells being one layer using the word simple or two or more using the word stratified. The second is going to help us identify the shape of a cell. So we're now going to move on in to a nice cross-section of the small intestine. We're looking here at a finger-like projection or villi. We're going to see and note as we zoom on in that we have a nice simple columnar arrangement of epithelium where these cells are oriented and arranged in a soldier-like fashion from the apical surface, the white space, down to the basement membrane. The pointer is pointing to our first modification, which is a goblet cell. It's going to secrete mucus onto the surface of this epithelium, hence our mucous membrane. The second modification we're going to see, and it's a little harder to see, but it is there, is that thin pink brush border. It is also called the microvilli, meaning little fingers. The function of this is to maximize surface area so that we can maximize absorption of nutrients during digestion. We're going to shift now to a stratified arrangement of epithelium away from the simple that we just got finished looking at. Now remember that stratified means that there are cells on top of cells on top of cells. And then the second half of this equation is going to be the shape of the cell. The first tissue we're going to look at is skin or scalp. This is part of our integument system. We can see that we are pointing to a modification found in this epithelium. This is keratin. It is a protein modification that hardens and deadens the cell line, the uppermost cell line, allowing for uh, waterproofing and protection. The pointer is pointing to that nice stratified squamous epithelium. We can see flattened cells stacked upon each other. Again, this is a good arrangement for protection against the elements of the outdoors. Now we're going to stay with stratified squamous, but we're going to shift. We're going to look at a tissue that does not utilize that keratinized protein modification. So this would be non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. We find these in a couple places in the body, the mouth, the esophagus, and the vagina. This tissue happens to be the esophagus. And again, we see that there is no wispy keratinized layer on top. We start right with a stacked conformation of squamous cells. Again, we're going to use the terminology of non-keratinized stratified squamous. Again, it's stratified squamous without that keratinized or hardened, deadened cell layer. There is no need for that level of protection inside the mouth, uh, the esophagus, or the vagina. We're going to switch gears now and shift to connective tissue. The first category we're going to look at is going to be loose connective tissue proper which is going to include areolar tissue, reticular tissue, and adipose. We're also going to look at dense irregular connected tissue and dense regular. The first tissue that we have here is areolar. Notice that we have a lot of space in between our cells and fibers, which is different than we saw with epithelium, which were tightly packed with very little, very little intracellular material. 
Here we're going to have more, and we're going to identify our connected tissue based on the fibers that we find within it. One is going to be collagen fibers. Those are those big, thick purple fibers that we were just focused in on. Next is going to be elastic fibers. These are these black stringy fibers that we're pointing to. And the last one are going to be reticular fibers. Reticular fibers consist of one or more types and usually are a lot thinner than collagen fibers and they tend to be branching. Now again, just understand where this loose connective tissue is. It is one of the most common connective tissues in the body. It holds organs in place and attaches epithelial tissue to its underlying tissue. The next connective tissue proper that we're gonna look at is gonna be adipose. Now this should be relatively easy for us to identify. We see histologically that the cell looks vacuous. It's not really empty. There is fat that resides within the cell. The cell is also unique in the fact that the nucleus is presented on the surface of the cell membrane. Another name for adipocytes are signet-shaped cell rings. Our next connective tissue is going to be dense regular connective tissue. Now our trigger and target words for this is smooth pink flowing river. We notice that these collagen fibers are arranged in bundles. Understand that there's really two arrangements in dense regular connective tissue that we can see. They're either gonna be arranged in cord or bundled arrangements or in sheet arrangements. Everything's flowing in the same direction. All the collagen fibers are running parallel to each other. The pointer is now pointing to a fibroblast. Where we find this tissue is connecting bones to bones and muscle to bones. This is going to be our second and last example of fibrous connective tissue. Notice that we can see a visual distinction between what we just saw previously in dense regular connective tissue. Notice that these collagen bundles are running in an irregular or unorderly fashion. They are not running parallel to each other like we just saw. This is gonna be a good example of dense irregular connective tissue. This tissue comprises a large portion of the dermis. We find it in other parts of the body like the white layer of the eyeball and the deeper skin layers. We're gonna to shift to our third category of connective tissue. We're gonna look at three types of cartilage. The key with cartilage is to understand that what fibers are located in the matrix are gonna help us identify them. The structures that we're pointing to now are gonna remain consistent through all three cartilages. These divots that we see are called lacunae. Within those lacunae are specialized cells called chondrocytes. Now the key to identifying this cartilage, again, this is hyaline cartilage, is in the matrix. Notice the matrix is solid pink. There is very few collagen and elastic fibers located in between these lacunae. This is a key example, a nice example of hyaline cartilage found in the trachea. The second cartilage we're gonna look at is called fibrocartilage. Again, as we zoom on in, notice that the lacunae with the chondrocytes located within them are the same. Again, the key is in the matrix. Look at the matrix. It is wavy, pink and wavy. These are large amounts of collagen fibers running through the matrix in between these lacunae. Fibrocartilage comprises the intervertebral discs in humans. And we also find it in the pubic symphysis, that little fibrocartilaginous pad between our pubic bones. This is functionally important because it's gonna allow us to withstand a tremendous amount of stress. The last type of cartilage we're gonna look at is elastic cartilage. Not to be confused with elastic connective tissue, which is found in arteries, which allows for elasticity and elastic recoil. Again, elastic connective tissue found in the human ear and in portions of the larynx or voice box. Again, notice that the lacunae and the chondrocytes are again consistently found throughout all three types of cartilage. The key and the difference is in the, is in the matrix. Look at the matrix, how would we describe it? Black and stringy. These black and stringy fibers are tons and tons of elastic fibers. 
The last slide we're going to look at is going to be a portion of our supportive connective tissue, which is compact bone. Notice that our trigger word for this is trees. This looks like a tree that has been cut down, comprising of concentric rings. The pointer is in the darkened section called the Haversion Canal or the Central Canal. Surrounding that central canal are a bunch of concentric rings called lamellae. At the margin of each lamellae is a divot called a lacunae. Within that lacunae are specialized cells that are going to maintain the bone called osteocytes. Stretching out from those lacunae are canaliculi.